Boys and girls, how you doing? Okay, so let's go ahead and get started today. Um, you guys are going to be a little bit more um, independent as we're going to go through PowerPoint here. Um, just realize I'm in the wrong spot. Okay, so we're going to go through a PowerPoint here, and you guys are going to um, take some notes. Uh, the note uh, document is already there. You know, take those notes, and at the end of this, uh, there will be a test. Uh, your safety test will be on Google Forms, okay? So here's how it works. This is the way I'm going to do things. I'm going to record videos like this um, that you have access to. Um, you'll answer those. Uh, you'll do those notes along the way most often. There's not always going to be notes for everything, but most often they will be. Um, and you'll submit those when you're done. And like I said, this one's going to have tests. This is our safety lesson plan that we go through every year uh, before we start class. So please listen up and answer along the way uh, in your notes, okay? Every seven seconds a worker is injured on the job. The numbers are staggering, and the worst part of this is each one is preventable. Take prevention action, uh, preventative action and cares, uh, can spare workers needless pain and suffering. Sorry, tongue-tied, going too fast. Oops. Okay. Um, so uh, U.S. companies pay about $62 billion uh, per year in workers in uh, workers workplace injuries. Accidents in the workplace are the fourth leading cause of uh, death in the U.S. Um, important stuff. You could uh, experience some of these things if you're injured on the job. A loss of opportunity, a loss of wage, temporary or permanent disability, and death. And I don't think anybody wants to die. I hate to be the teacher who died in the classroom. Uh, employees could experience, uh, the employer themselves could experience decreased productivity and increased insurance premiums, and they don't want that at all. So important here, um, listen up, and it's very important we understand this, who pays? Uh, workers' compensation insurance. Workers' compensation uh, insurance is a form of accidental insurance paid by employers. If you're injured on the job or acquire a work-related illness, uh, it, workers' comp will pay your medical expenses, and if you can't work, it will also cover uh, lost wages, compensation, until you are able to return back to work. The insurance is paid for by your employer and supervised by the state. The important thing here to remember is your employer is the one who's making the payments. If you're injured, it's costing your employer. Safety is no accident. We can be smart about safety by taking responsibility, lifting properly, understanding chemicals, knowing emergency procedures, and knowing fire safety. Um, so we need to take responsibility for our own safety on the job. They will give us what we need to protect ourselves, but for the most part, we are the ones who have to be responsible uh, for our outcomes in an accident in this situation. These are the things we need to be aware of. Follow proper procedures always. Uh, dress properly to avoid accident, uh, accidents. Losing, uh, excuse me, loose clothing and high heels are potentially dangerous. So gentlemen, no wearing high heels at the job, okay? Um, remove jewelry that can snag in moving uh, machine parts. Um, necklaces, uh, you know, that hang low uh, can get caught. You know, in the hospital when we used to work, we uh, had our badges we had to have with us. Um, and some people wear the lanyard. You guys know the lanyard is a school, right? You got the lanyard on. Um, that lanyard should be a breakaway. Basically, if someone reaches up and grabs that lanyard and pulls, if it's not a breakaway, they've got a hold of you, right? Um, but if they pull hard enough, there's a little clip in the back that pops loose. So we need to think about those types of things taking responsibility for ourselves. Report unsafe conditions to your supervisor immediately. Whenever something is unsafe, make sure that you uh, identify it as soon as possible and uh, get it to your supervisor so we can get that fixed. Uh, report all accident injuries to your supervisor immediately, even if the injury is slight, and keep your work area clean of potential hazards. Never take shortcuts, guys. Not necessary. Always do the job appropriately, always, all the way through. Never take shortcuts. Don't fool around. Um, we all enjoy having fun, but in the middle of work, especially when we're doing things that are, can be dangerous, don't fool around. Keep food and drink out of the work area. Always make sure we're keeping our area clean of uh, potential hazards. Pay attention to what you are doing. Learn what to do in an emergency. Ask questions if you're unsure about policies and procedures. Um, we need to be aware of what the next steps are being. You know, um, when we're in school, we do our great shakeout. We do fire drills. It's about practicing, being prepared, okay? And if we don't understand, I'm brand new at the school, you know, my first year there, and I understand what the procedures are, I'm asking, okay? Find my supervisor. What do I have to do here? How do I keep everybody, including myself, safe? According to the Federal Bureau of Labor Statistics, the back injury uh, of more than 1 million workers account for nearly 20% of all injuries and illnesses in the workplace. 
Um, so back injuries is what you need to know here. This is the worst case scenario. This is what most people end up with. Um, and sometimes the back injury is slight. It's not that big a deal. It becomes a nagging thing. I've had three back injuries myself uh, on the job. But, um, and that's just part of the job. That's just part of the nature of what we do. Um, but still, back injuries are things we need to be most concerned about. That goes back to lifting techniques. Before you lift an object, inspect the item for rough, jagged edges, splinters, uh, grease, or other slippery surfaces. I uh, want to make sure we have a good, strong hold of that object. Wear gloves for protection. Plan your route before you lift. Um, we want to make sure we're going to do a short move. If we're going to shorten that move much, as much as we possibly can, don't make it any bigger than it needs to be. Know your path. Clear any obstructions from your path. Check the weight of the load and get help if you need it. Gentlemen, I'm talking to you. This is a, this is a guy thing. We have this tendency to, um, to uh, think we can handle it. I can do it. If it's too heavy for you, it's too heavy for you, get help. There's nothing wrong with getting help, especially when you, you're you going to do something that's going to injure your back, and it does happen, and it does, it's not nice. So basically lifting properly, okay, and here's a good example of not lifting properly. Place your feet as close to the load as possible with both feet shoulder width apart. Um, you're planting a good base uh, for yourself. Bend at your knees. Keep your back and neck straight. Um, and always lift with your legs. So we're using our legs, not our back. Uh, make sure you bend properly and use that big, beefy, you know, um, thigh muscle to help you lift. Grasp the load firmly. Draw your arms in close to your body. You want things close to you. Stand slowly and lift smoothly using your, your legs. Understanding chemicals, okay? So in every, every company's gonna have chemicals we gotta deal with. The manufacturer labels every container of chemical before moving, handling, or opening a chemical container, read the label and follow the instructions. The label will tell you the following. Uh, it'll give you these types of things. Uh, name of the chemical, name, address, and emergency number that made and imported the chemical, and physical hazards of the chemical itself. Understanding chemicals, procedures for handling and storing uh, these chemicals, uh, hazardous uh, health hazards associated with the chemicals, recommended personal protective equipment that you need when you're using this type of chemical, and emergency procedures if you come in contact with it. What do you need to do? All the chemicals will have this on there. Uh, consulting your material safety data sheet. The school has this. Um, my classroom has one. Anybody who has any kind of chemicals or any kind of hazardous materials, um, in my class, I know a lot, but I do have one. Um, you know, anybody has any kind of chemicals at all, there's an MSDS sheet, con uh, a material data sheet that is there. Um, and this is brought to the fire department, the emergency crew that's responding. They are going to be the ones going through that to identify what chemicals are actually on this uh, campus, this business, whatever it might be. Okay, so PPE, personal uh, protective equipment. Uh, examples of wearing personal protective equipment. Here are some examples, safety goggles and glasses, work gloves, hard hats, safety shoes, um, some other types, rubber boots, earplugs, face shields, respiratory protection of some sort. These are things that actually um, are, uh, are PPE, personal protective equipment that we should have access to, uh, depending on the type of job we're doing, um, and it should be in good working order. Using equipment correctly, uh, use the right tool for the right job. Uh, you never want to use anything that's not meant to be for the, because you know tools might slip and then you end up injuring yourself because you were using the wrong tool. Don't do that. Inspect tools before use. Make sure they're they're working properly. They're clean and they're they're uh, functional. Uh, keep tools clean. Store tools properly. Make sure they have a place to be. Only laying around like my garage. You're gonna trip over things in my garage. Okay, so using equipment correctly, operate machinery only if you have been instructed to do so. Uh, never leave a machine running or unattended. Never remove safety guards from a machine. Do not run faulty equipment. And turn off and lock machinery when making repairs, troubleshooting, or performing maintenance. Earthquakes. Did you guys know we have these? We haven't had one in a while. Knock on wood. It's probably coming. Okay, before. Check classroom, training facilities, rest areas, and corridors for hazardous hazards such as hanging plants, books on hot shelves, unsecured wall fixtures, making sure your work area is safe. So your work area is at home. Is your area safe? Discuss training site disaster plan, participate in active drills. We all understand drop cover and hold in place. You know, when we're in school, we're going to go through um, our disaster plans, our uh, great shakeout, which we're going to miss this year. But, um, yeah, we'd be going through these processes. 
No location of emergency supplies in your workspace. Items that might include a flashlight, extra batteries, storable nutrition, uh, needed medication, the booklets on emergency procedures, things that we would use to in, in the event of emergency. Get under a sturdy table or desk or stand in a strong doorway. Watch for falling or sliding objects. Stay away from uh, windows, outer, outer walls, outside doors. If you find yourself in an elevator, stop at the nearest floor. Take cover against the interior wall of that uh, elevator. Uh, stop at the nearest floor. Take cover against the interior wall. Duck and cover uh, your head with your arms. Move to an open area if uh, outdoors. Stay away from trees, power lines, and other structures. And stop your car if you're driving. Stay inside. If you've ever been in a car during an earthquake, it's a really odd, weird feeling. Remain under cover for a few minutes. There may be aftershocks. I don't know if you know that, but there might be. Move to the center of the building. Do not evacuate until instructed unless there is immediate danger. If you guys are at home. You guys are going to follow your parents' instructions or do what's necessary to keep yourself safe. But, you know, staying inside if the, if the structure is sound is probably a, a good thing to uh, do because you don't know what's going on on the outside either. Check for injuries, administer first aid, um, assist students, employees with special needs. Uh, we always wanna make sure we take care of those that aren't able to do it for themselves. Um, check for fire hazards, do not smoke or light matches. Do not uh, use elevators, replace telephone receivers on cradles, but do not use them uh, unless there is a fire or serious injury. So wanna leave those lines open for more important stuff. We'll call home on, the, on a phone at work. Cooperate with emergency service officials, listen for emergency information over battery radio, battery operated radio, remain calm, don't spread any rumors, and reassure and uh, reassure and help others. Fire safety. It's going to happen anywhere, okay? The best way to control fire is to prevent them in the first place. Major causes of fires are careless smoking habits and accumulated paper, lint, grease, trash. Fire needs three things to support combustion. Fuel, something that will burn, heat, and air. Classes of extinguishers would be A, B, C, and D. We typically see A, a B, and Cs. Um, Ds are metal uh, for metal fires, and we'll talk more about that kind of stuff uh, later. Maintaining a clean work area and prevent rubbish and other combustible materials from accumulating. Best way to avoid fires. Keep combustible materials at least 18 inches away from appliances like uh, coffee makers and space heaters. Report any fire hazards to your supervisor. You're at home, you're supervising yourself in most cases, or your parents are there. Store flammables in uh, approved container, and these are business kind of things. Sometimes there's places we have to keep our uh, flammable materials specifically. If a fire breaks out, know your exit so that you may leave quickly, and know how to report a fire. Know where the fire extinguishers are and how to operate one. And we're going to use the acronym PASS. I don't know if you guys know what this is, but here it is. PASS is pull the pin. Aim at the base of the fire, squeeze the, the handle, and sweep uh, from side to side. This is how we put out a fire using an extinguisher. If you don't know how to use one and the fire breaks out, don't try and figure out how to use the last minute. Um, if you have, uh, you've got some training here, basic training, we're going to do some more of that fire class specifically. Um, if you understand how to use it, then yes, you use it. But always make sure that if you're using an extinguisher, you keep your back to your exit, if that makes sense, right? You're inside your house, it's burning in the kitchen. Um, you've got a, a garage door that leads to the outside, inside the kitchen, and between the fire and you is that garage door. Keep your back to the garage door. Put the fire out, because if it doesn't go out, then you can bail out of the, out of the garage door of the kitchen. Don't put yourself in a spot where fire's gonna grow bigger, and now you have no way out, okay? something else to think about. So this is how we do this kind of stuff. Okay, these lecture notes. Um, basically, um, you know, I'm going to record the lectures. I will now put it up uh, on Classroom. You guys will have a document most often attached to it is notes. And the notes will be pretty simple to follow. You just simply add the information as you go along. Um, when uh, you're done, you submit that to me. And this one specifically at the end, there will be a test. The test will pop up uh, shortly after um, uh, you've got started working on uh, the PowerPoint itself. The test needs to be done, turn that in, and as long as I get the notes and the test completed, you've passed this portion, I'll give you your points for that, okay? Um, we are independent working when this kind of stuff happens, so if you have any questions at any time, email me and we'll talk, okay? I'll be available that way. All right, guys, thank you very much for your time. Have a good day.